Hi everyone, I'm Sarah. Thanks for joining me for another Asbury Woods virtual visit. Today, we'll be reading the story, Waiting for Wings by Lois Ellert. And then we will do a craft with coffee filters, creating our own butterfly wing designs. We'll talk a little bit about some of the species of butterflies that we might find in our area and when we can expect to see them coming back from either migrating south for the winter or hibernating as caterpillars over the winter. Waiting for Wings by Lois Ellert. Out in the fields, eggs are hidden from view, clinging to leaves with butterfly glue. Soon caterpillars hatch, they creep and chew. Each one knows what it must do. Find a place where winds don't blow. Then make a case in which to grow. Caterpillar changes now begin. Body and wings take shape within. When it's time, each case is torn. Wings unfold, new butterflies are born. They pump their wings, get ready to fly. Then hungry butterflies head for the sky, looking for flowers with nectar to eat. They catch a whiff of something sweet. They follow that fragrant scent of perfume until they find our garden in bloom. We've been waiting for wings. We watch them circle, land on their feet, unroll their tongues and begin to eat. They dip and sip, then fly away back home to the fields. They have eggs to lay. Asbury Woods has three creatures waiting for wings right now. Cercopia moths that were found as eggs last summer. Cercopia moth eggs can most often be found on maple tree leaves. Female Cercopia moths lay up to 100 eggs at one time. After the eggs hatch, the larvae go through five larval instars, or growth development stages. The first, seen here, is a small black caterpillar with lots of hairy spikes on it. Each larval stage lasts about one week as the caterpillar grows and changes from the small black caterpillar to a yellow-green color and then a blue-green color with blue, yellow, and orange points. When the larva is full grown, it can be four to four and a half inches long or a little bit longer than an adult pointer finger. After growing for most of the summer, the larva will create a cocoon and spend the entire winter inside. In the spring, an adult Cercopia moth will hatch out of the cocoon. Adults are red, brown, and white and have crescent-shaped markings. Cercopia moths are North America's largest native moth and females can have a wingspan of five to seven inches, about the length of a mechanical pencil. For our craft today, the coffee filter butterflies, you'll need just a few simple supplies that you can find around your house. The first thing that you'll need is plain coffee filters. These can be any size that you have. Next, you'll need some markers in your favorite colors and some paper clips, clothes pins, anything you have that can hold the center of the butterfly together. The last thing you'll need is a liquid to help the color spread on the butterfly wings. Water works just fine for this, but you could also use isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol. You'll also need something to help you apply the liquid to the color. You can use cotton swabs for that or a spray bottle. I made videos of myself doing this craft a couple different ways that I'll show you. And the first thing that you want to do is to draw a design on your coffee filter. After you have your design, place the coffee filter somewhere on a surface that won't get stained. 
In my video, I used a glass baking pan as kind of my crafting surface. You could use a plate or a plastic tablecloth, anything that won't pick up the color. After you have your design on and you've laid your coffee filter down on your crafting table, you can take either a spray bottle of water or Q-tips dipped in water or the rubbing alcohol and apply that to the color. You'll see the color start to spread out onto the coffee filter and create kind of this tie-dye effect on your butterfly wings. So let's take a look at what that process looks like. After your coffee filters have dried, you need just a few finishing touches to complete your butterflies. First, you'll want to scrunch up the middle of your coffee filter and put on that paper clip or clothespin to hold it together in the center. Then I took a strip of just plain coffee filter and twisted it up and put it onto the paper clip to look like the butterfly's antenna. If you use the clothespins, you can also draw on the clothespins to create the butterfly's body, give it some eyes. Uh, you can use pipe cleaners or plastic straws for the antenna, whatever you have available at home. 